Evening friends, I trust everyone is doing well. Uh, behind me is New York City. I'm in Brooklyn. I'm going to be away for about six weeks, so I'm going to put on hold making my testimony. But I, I, I want to share some things about object lessons, and I thought this is the time to do it. A few more distractions here in New York. It's kind of hard to get my mind back on testimonies and uh, mentone and life in the woods. But you know, object lessons are abounding. They're everywhere around us. So I, I've had a few experiences lately where I can see the Lord has given us these lessons of everyday life to illustrate spiritual truths. Uh, my wife and I, it was my birthday not long ago, went to town uh, to visit uh, Atlanta, went to Atlanta, visit my uh, wife's sister, did some shopping. We were in a store and I tried on a pair of pants. Now with the COVID and things, you can't go into the dressing rooms in this place. So, but they'll let you put the pants on over your, uh, your regular pants. So you can, out in the aisle, you can, you know, put the pants on, try them on, and just take them off there. And I did. But of course, I had my wallet, I had my uh, keys, my cell phone, and the pockets of my pants. And they were kind of uh, bulky. So I took that out, tried the pants on, Darlene checked them out. Actually, I bought the pants, preached in church the next Sabbath wearing them. Bought the pants, and then uh, went up to pay for them. This was about 10, 15 minutes later. And as I got to the register, I reached for my wallet and it was gone. And I noticed my phone was gone and my keys were gone. Because when I took my keys and my wallet and my phone out at the, uh, you know, to try on the pants, I put them in the buggy. But I put the pants in Darlene's buggy and we pushed that up to the register and I left everything behind. Now this is a city. It's my phone, it's my wallet with all my money and credit cards, it's my, and it's the keys to the car. And I just had like it's almost uh, a very, you know, you know what I mean, right? This sinking feeling come upon me, came upon me, and I just I panicked. I thought, oh no, <laughs> no keys, no money, no phone. No. And I went and I looked. I got on my knees, looked up under the uh, the aisles, and just couldn't find it anywhere. And then finally, after searching, after uh, some hectic searching, I found the buggy, and all of it was still in the buggy. The keys, the wallet and my phone, and I was really relieved. But later on the way home, I was thinking about that experience. You know, you can have an incredibly, uh, uh, what would you call it? It's just a sinking, depressing feeling when you think, wow, I lost my money and my phone and my keys. But how much more so if a realization comes to us that we've lost our souls? How much more important spiritual things? I mean, to lose a phone is not the end of the world. To lose your, you know, lose, lose a few dollars in a credit card, to lose keys to a car, all of that can be replaced. It's not the end of the world. But eternal salvation, that's the end of the world. And the lesson I got was how much more important are the eternal things? Because if you come to a place and there's a realization that you've lost eternal life, what kind of sinking feeling will that be? Well, that was an object lesson I got there. And then when we got back, I have a friend in Waynesboro who's been working on chainsaws and weed eaters and different, different uh, pieces of equipment for more than 20 years. We've got to be pretty good friends. And he found this old chainsaw, and he was going to try to, to sell it to me. He said it looks pretty. He, know, he, he knew that I needed a chainsaw. So he, he came across this chainsaw. And he said, I, I, can, I can shape it up. I think I can get it cleaned up and sell it to you for a really good price. And he took me back there to look at it. And it, it looked pretty bad. You know, it was covered with dirt and, and you know, the chain was dull and it, it looked pretty rough. And he looked at me and he said, you know, it'll look a lot different once it's cleaned up. And I thought, that's it. That's the lesson. You know, we look pretty rough. We look pretty dull. We look pretty uh, hopeless. But when the Lord gets hold of us and cleans us up, it'll clean up good, he said. <laughs> and it did. I bought the saw, and it looked like a, a night and day difference from when I saw it in the shop to when I went back to buy it after he'd done the work on the saw. And I think that was an illustration of how God can take a man that's all rough and dull and dirty uh, and, and take a man or a woman and, and shape them right up. They can clean up, and they look a lot better when the Lord reshapes them, re re revitalizes and renews them. So that was a lesson I got at the chainsaw shop, and it was, uh, it was a pretty good lesson. 
Uh, same week. I mean, th I mean, a, a few days later. I got a lot of lessons in this one week. I'm getting a lot of lessons up here in New York. You know, I got a lesson. I had a root canal that was going that was going to do. Now, if you don't know what a root canal is, it's a it's a it's a special procedure where the dentist will drill out the pulp. The pulp is where the nerve is. This is where the pain is. That's having pain, a painful, uh, a real painful uh, condition here in my tooth. And as I sat in the chair, she got the equipment. It looks like a big mic. I don't know what it is. It's some high powered microscope looking thing with a, a, a beam of light going into my mouth. And she took an hour and a half because you have to take the top of the tooth off then go down and drill all the way down to the bottom of the roots, and then you uh, you 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 you, you uh, what do you, what do you call it? You disinfect, and then you fill the the cavity, and then they put a crown back on top. And I was sitting in there in the chair. Now this was an hour and a half, but you know I never thought once about saying, "Hey, could you hurry up? <laughs> hey, could you hurry up? You know this is the time." where patience is called for. Philippi, uh, Revelation 14, verse 12, here is the patience of the saints. We need to have patience. And when a procedure like that is being done, my dear friends, there was no temptation to lose my patience. I wanted her to take her time because I knew what she was doing was an essential, important part of my mental, I mean, my, my dental hygiene, maybe my mental hygiene too. And so I, I was saying, take your time. Don't be in a hurry. I got a lesson about patience. And then that, that uh, very involved process when it was over, she said, now uh, we've done the root canal. It has to have a crown put on top. And so and I'm going to be, when I go back, from, get back home, I'm going to have a crown put on. But you know, if she had not addressed the problem and had just put a crown on the tooth, although it would have looked fine from the outward observation, the toothache is still there. The nerve is still infected. The crown is covering up and the outward appearance is covering up a major toothache and a lot of misery. And I got another lesson that God does not do outward work. He does not just crown a problem. He goes down to the root of a problem. He takes it out. He, he cleans us up. And then he fills us up with his Holy Spirit. And then he crowns us with a new heart. And that was just another experience. These, you know, these object lessons, Jesus used them frequently in the New Testament. You know, Nicodemus in John chapter 3, I think it's verses 8 and 9, he's talking about the wind is a symbol for the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2, the fire is a symbol for the Holy Spirit. The wind and the fire and the water and the waves, all of these everyday occurrences, the lamb and, and the door and, and all the, the bread, the Lord uses these things we see in everyday life as symbols of spiritual truth. So as you go through life and you can see the things happening in the physical, secular world, the Lord will help us to, uh, to see in each one uh, a spiritual lesson, to discern in each one spiritual truths that will help us to grow in grace and encourage us. And it's, 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 in, it's a great encouragement to see these uh, reminders that God is on the job, God is working, God is good, and He's going to finish the work He's begun in us. So when, uh, when I get back from New York, I'm going to start up my testimony again. Until then, I'm going to do some things and object lessons. So my dear friends, uh, pray for me and the work I'm doing here in New York. May the Lord continue to bless you. This is part one of, I think, six parts on object lessons. God bless you. You have a nice day.